Dr. Ridwan Suleiman is a senior researcher at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. He joins us now via Skype. Uh, doctor, thank you for being with us as always. And you always give us these wonderful graphs uh, so we can see what's happening in graphic form. Let's start with the weekly figures. So you're looking at the average uh, weekly cases and after hitting more than 12,000, they've actually declined. Uh, does that tell anything? Uh, tell us anything about um, the, this peak that we're going through and, and when we could uh, see the other side of it. Good evening, Francis. Um, yes, I think there, there are a few positive signs that we're starting to see over the last couple of weeks. Um, one, as you've mentioned, is the stabilization of the daily infection rate. Um, what, when we last spoke um, about three weeks back, we were in this in the middle of a surge where the doubling of COVID-19 cases was every two weeks. Um, what we can see now is that the, the number of cases has, has certainly stabilized. Of course, there are limitations and nuances to the data, and one needs to be aware of that. In terms of the cases in this, uh, in this particular graph, they are limited by the number of tests. Um, but looking also at the positivity rate, which is quite high in South Africa, it has also stabilized, and one can say, therefore, that the infection rate has, has somewhat stabilized. The actual decrease that you've seen here over the last couple of weeks, that can be attributed to and correlates quite well with, with the decrease in the daily testing um, that we've seen over the last couple of weeks. So, so we can't jump on this and say it's all getting better because it's linked to testing. Let's bring up uh, another graph because on the other hand, the, the death rate per week is climbing. It's still low compared to global averages, uh, but is something happening here? Yes. Um, so, of course, the limitations for all of the data, as you said, with the cases, they are limited by the testing. In terms of the deaths, what we're seeing here is um, that the death numbers do lag the cases. Um, where, what we saw a few weeks back was that the cases were doubling every two weeks, and you can sort of see a, a similar trend in the death uh, numbers. If you look over the last six weeks here in particular, looking at weeks 27 to 29 to 31, you see this, this increase still in the number of deaths. Although not quite doubling every two weeks, it is following the same trend of the cases and, and still increasing. Hopefully, as we're seeing with the cases, which has stabilized, hopefully that the number of deaths will also st soon start to level off um, and, and, and decrease, hopefully. All right, and like you say, um, the testing is so important. Let's look at the weekly uh, test figures. What does it tell you? So if you look at the number of, of tests on average over each week, as you put up in the graph here, uh, what we saw over the last couple of weeks is there was a slight decline in the number of uh, daily tests. Um, I'm not too sure what the reasons behind this are. One can speculate. Of course, it would be useful to get official um, an official statement on this. Uh, what, what we what we do know is that South Africa does have a large outbreak, and based on the size of that outbreak, we do require more testing to be done. Um, there is a bigger demand for testing. Of course, um, also with the high test positivity rate. That's another indication that we have a lot of undetected cases and we need to still ramp up the testing. Testing is very useful and can be used as, as an important tool to get ahead of the curve, um, to understand where the virus is spreading. Um, and together with quick turnaround times, as well as efficient contact tracing and tracking, this can be a very useful tool to combat the virus. At this stage, we're using testing more as a diagnostic measure rather than as a tool to, to actually beat the virus. All right, so, so that is a big question that, uh, that we here should explore. Why is that testing uh, coming down week on week uh, when, when the cases right now are going up because we're in the peak? Now, now Dr. Suleiman, government often talks about the doubling rate or the time it takes for the number of cases to double. So for context, the doubling rate was 15 days um, during lockdown level five. Then as we opened up the economy, it reduced to 12 days. What's happening right now? Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so the doubling rate is a very useful measure. It allows us to quantify the trajectories, allows us, it gives us a good uh, to, a measure to see how quickly um, these numbers are increasing or doubling in this particular case. Um, as you said that a, a few weeks ago, the, the numbers were doubling every two weeks. 
what we're seeing over the last um, two to three weeks is this curve has started to bend, which is a positive sign. Um, and we're seeing that the doubling rate has slowed down to about every four weeks. That's the doubling rate of COVID-19 cases. Um, so that is a positive sign. Indeed, the, the death rate uh, also, I think, slowing, even though the weekly figures are up. Just, just take us through the doubling of deaths. Sure. Um, so, as, as mentioned earlier, the death numbers do lag the case numbers. Uh, what we are seeing is that the, um, the number of, of deaths are following the same trend as the number of cases. Um, so, that's, that's good because um, the tracking the deaths allows us to pick up any anomalies in the cases curve. Um, as mentioned earlier, deaths do lag the cases. So we, we, we're starting to see a bit of a slowdown in terms of the doubling rate of deaths. It's slowing down to a, a, about every three weeks now. Um, hopefully, if it continues to follow the trend in cases, this will hopefully continue to slow down as we, as we go forward. We, we hope so indeed. All right, let's, let's look at a graph. It shows the daily cases versus the total confirmed cases. Explain this graph to us and why it may suggest um, that, that we're going through the peak. Of course, absolutely. Um, so the, looking at this particular graph which you've put up, it's a phase space plot. Essentially, it's just the number of of daily cases against the total confirmed cases, and it's it's plotted on on uh, logarithmic scales. Um, essentially, it's just useful to show when we are actually bending the curve, um, and it, it's it's a very um, relevant question right now where everyone is asking whether we're peaking um, and. When, when we talk about peaking, we talk about whether we're reaching the highest point or the highest number of daily COVID-19 infections. So based on, on that particular definition and looking at this curve here, yes, we are reaching a peak and we are seeing a stabilization in, in the number of daily COVID-19 cases, as you can see um, on this particular curve. Um, as mentioned before, there are limitations and cases are limited by testing and the actual decrease that you're seeing in this particular curve can be attributed to the decrease in testing that we spoke about earlier. So simplistically, it means that things will get better here on in, uh, not progressively worse. Um, yes, hopefully the, if, if this trend does continue, um, we hope that we have reached the highest point and that things will now slow down. Um, of course, when th there is a caveat to that, and that is the testing. You, you just put up the, the test positivity rate, and I think that's a very important measure to track right now in South Africa. As mentioned, the number of, of tests that we're conducting has not kept up with the scale of the outbreak. Um, the current test positivity rate is averaging around 25%, which is quite high. Um, in other words, what that means is that finding positive case for every test conducted, uh, which also indicates that there are many undetected cases. The good news, however, is that the positivity rate has been has uh, been has stabilized and is starting to to come down somewhat. Um, so that is an indication that the that the cases are also stabilizing. The big caveat to that is that we aren't out of the woods just yet. Um, only when we get that test positivity rate well below 10%, in fact, below 5%, can we say that we've got a good handle of the outbreak um, and that we understand how the epidemic is, is progressing in the country. All right, and we're bringing up that uh, daily test positivity rate again. L let's move to another graph that brings this all together. Um, if we bring up the slide looking at the totals, it, it again um, highlights what you're saying, that the death rate picking up slightly, but active cases coming down. Just take us through it. Sure. So if, if we, as you mentioned at the beginning of the show, that we have passed over 500,000 confirmed cases, and that's indicated by the total on, in the black line. Um, for, um, on a positive note, the number of recoveries has been increasing 
Um, and it's increasing uh, quite significantly over the last few weeks, as you can see by the green line um, on this curve. The recovery rate is now over 68%, which is, which is very positive. Um, what that means is that the active cases or open cases, that being the total minus the recovered, minus the deaths, um, that has sort of plateaued, um, as you can see, and is starting to decrease. Um, so we're looking at about just over 150,000 active cases at the moment. Um, and, and hopefully if, if we continue to, to do, uh, put forward the right measures and to uh, practice those uh, preventative measures, we can drive that, that curve all the way back down to zero, or at least as close to it as possible. Doctor, can you explain when you are deemed to have recovered? Um, because may maybe it's linked to testing. Um, do you need to go and test negative? Some people are, aren't even bothering to do that. Uh, so, so how are we collecting this data? So a few weeks ago, the health minister, Minister McKeese, announced a um, a change in the isolation period um, and a decrease from 14 days down to 10 days. Currently, we, as far as I understand, we aren't actually testing for recoveries. Um, and one is because um, we, we have a shortage of, of uh, test kits and um, we need to prioritize testing um, to high risk cases and um, um, healthcare workers, etc. So as far as I understand, we're not testing for recoveries. Cases um, are deemed to be recovered if um, in terms of mild cases, 10 days after um, the onset of symptoms, and in terms of hospitalized cases, 10 days after uh, being, um, uh, after being uh, out of the hospital. All right, so it's, it's not linked to testing, which is the, the good news. It's just linked to the number of time. Finally, let's take a look at the provinces. Uh, Gauteng has had the most confirmed cases. We're at about 178,000 or so. Uh, deaths above 2,000. The Western Cape is second in terms of cases, but has the most deaths still uh, above 3,000. Then the Eastern Cape, uh, KwaZulu-Natal, are, are coming up. What's interesting is that many of the provinces are, are showing this leveling off that you're talking about. Uh, what does this tell us about their respective peaks? So if we look at the individual provinces, of course we know that the virus is spreading at different rates through the different provinces. Um, looking at, at a graph of the daily cases within each province, it's starting to show positive signs where a lot of the curves are starting to bend, um, and that's what we want. Um, of course, Western Cape was the epicenter of the virus earlier on, um, and it reached a peak a lot earlier. Western Cape, um, as shown in the blue line at the top, um, has, has been on this plateau for a long time. Uh, but what we're starting to see is that there is a decrease in the number of cases. There's also a decrease in the number of deaths, daily deaths, and the number of um, daily hospitalizations, which indicates that Western Cape um, has peaked. Um, in terms of the other provinces, particularly if we look at the, the bigger provinces, um, Gauteng, Eastern Cape, and KwaZulu-Natal all soon followed the, that trajectory and, and, and increased um, recently. What we're starting to see is a bend in those curves. Um, of course, as mentioned before, the cases are limited by testing. The test positivity rates are high for all of these provinces. Um, for, for these provinces of Gauteng, Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal, we're still seeing an increase in the, in the daily hospitalizations, in the daily deaths. Um, those do lag the cases. Um, so we need to wait for those to start coming down. Um, so there are positive signs um, and there are signs that the rate of increase of the infraction is slowing down. Um, however, we need to bear in mind that the test positivity rate is still quite high and there are certainly undetected cases. Until we get that test positivity rate down, then we're still not quite out of the woods. Um, so looking at those particular curves, what we do want is to drive those curves all the way down to zero, as close to zero as possible. Yeah. And the most effective and efficient measures are probably the simplest ones of washing our hands, maintaining good hygiene practices, wearing a face mask and watching our physical distance, because um, ultimately it is still in our hands. 
All right, uh, this has been fascinating. Thank you so much. That was CSIR senior researcher Dr. Ridwan Suleiman. Uh, and some positive news, as he says, the, the Western Cape through the peak. Um, data suggesting other provinces may be heading towards the peaks, uh, although uh, you need to, to uh, ramp up the, the testing to make doubly sure. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Suleiman.